You know, I can't remember exactly who it was that said it to me, but somebody said, wouldn't it be great if we had a musical about Dorothy that people could come every summer and see and raise money? And so uh, that put the bug in my ear six years ago. You guys ready? Let's get in our places. Dorothy was a pioneer. I don't know if I want to say ahead of her time. I don't know that she even paid attention to that. I think she knew what she wanted. She was trained as a nurse, wanted to, you know, be educated, do a job, but also wanted to live in a certain unique place and found her way to do that. This past December was the 30th anniversary of Dorothy's death and Barb's dad, Bob Carey, actually wrote her first biography, Root Beer Lady, which the musical is based on. I've been able to reconnect with my dad, even though he's gone, by doing this work. And of course, I'm intimate with that book now, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I read the book years ago, Bob Carey's Root Beer Lady book, and I reread it in November, and then I reread it again in June. I, I continue to be amazed at how she just did what needed to be done. And it's way too hot to be belly aching about it. The music part was fairly easy for me, but the dialogue wasn't. Pause, and then too hot to be crabbing about it, and then Dorothy says too hot to be belly aching about it, okay? I've never done anything like that before. That's totally out of my comfort zone. So, but I knew that it needed dialogue to go with the music. Really? Yeah. I was, I was oh, supposed, supposed to go fishing, go fishing this morning. This I, don't morning. Yep. I don't know how I got roped into making this root beer. So I worked on it a little bit. I would keep a notebook with me and I would write down thoughts and ideas. And I got a grant and I worked really hard on the script and then the grant allowed me to hire a what's known as a script doctor. And for four days, she came here to the house, and she and I sat down and worked on that script. Together, we came up with it. Of course, it's gone through many changes since then. I think it's been rewritten three times, three times, six times, something like that. But it, it evolves, and it's still evolving. This, will, this is not a finished production by any means. Okay, let's try it for Ruth again. So when Barb did the first staged reading last fall where it was just kind of the first teaser of the musical and then she took feedback. Ely can be very critical. Those people, they're, they're the old school Slovenian group, you know, and they're pretty critical and Dorothy was a legend and so I had to make sure I got it right. And it kind of made it their story too then, you know. They feel a part of this production that's happening because they had a say in it. Like telling me to write a song called Quit Your Belly Aching. <laughs> which I would have never done if they hadn't told me they needed to be in that play. <laughs> Dorothy had a sign on her island that said it was just a white hand-painted sign with black lettering and of course you're supposed to think it looks like some Native American word and then people try to sound it out and then they get it, quit your belly aching. I mean I heard her say that a lot, quit your belly aching. <laughs> I've been telling people I am having the time of my life right now. This is the high point of my life. Pretty much if you put your mind to something, you can do it. You can do it. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> this was my last big hurrah as a musician, writer. Um, I'm hoping maybe someone will take it and run with it down the road here so that for years it gets played in Ely or around the range. Minneapolis, who knows? I hope it does inspire other people who are musicians to think about you know, expanding and getting outside your comfort zone a little bit. I, I never in a million years thought that I would end up doing this. It, it's a beautiful thing.